Hi, my name is Alyssa Sebring, and today I will be describing two figures from the fifth edition of the textbook Molecular Biology by Robert F. Weaver. This video was made for MCDB 427, which is Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. Before we begin analyzing the figures and describing the experiments, it's necessary to first understand some important background information. In eukaryotes, pre-mRNA contains both exons and introns. Most mRNAs have a 5' prime cap and also a chain of AMP nucleotides added to their 3' prime end. This chain is called the poly A tail. This tail is important to protect the mRNA during splicing, which results in the mature mRNA. At the time of these experiments, the mechanism of polyadenylation was known for viruses, but was not known for eukaryotes. However, it was known to scientists that polyadenylation is important for stability and, transla and translatability, but it was unknown whether transcription continues past the poly-A site. It was also unknown whether the poly-A site is necessary for termination of transcription. One hypothesis, which was later proven incorrect, suggested that transcription terminates at the poly-A site and that, poly and that polyadenylation would then occur. It is now known that the mechanism of polyadenylation usually involves clipping an mRNA precursor even before transcription has terminated and then adding poly A to the newly, newly exposed 3' prime end, as stated by Weaver. This is shown by figure 15.12. First, transcription occurs and continues past the poly A site. In this figure, the poly A site is somewhere around where the green and the red meet. Next, the poly A site is recognized and cleavage of transcription occurs. This can happen, this cleavage can happen even if the red section is still being elongated. The poly A tail is then added to the mRNA, which is shown in green. This is done by the enzyme poly A polymerase. The cleaved portion of the transcript, shown in red, is then degraded. Before this information was known, it seemed unusual to scientists that transcription would occur far past a polyadenylation site, because this would mean that RNA past the site would be clipped off and wasted. In order to learn more about this, the scientists Hofer and Darnell performed the following experiments. Please note that the site at which the cleavage signal is received is different from the site that is actually cleaved. Throughout these experiments, the term poly A site is used. Although it is not clear if they are referring to the poly A recognition site, which receives the signal for cleavage, or the poly-A cleavage site where the trans transcript is actually cleaved. However, because these sites are in close proximity, it does not really matter to which site they are referring, so don't worry about this distinction in the following figures. The experiments that we are about to discuss are done using a nuclear run-on, which is an assay used to monitor transcription in a given cell. Figure 5.33 shows how this experiment is done. It begins with cells already undergoing transcription. The cell shown shows that gene Y is being transcribed. The nuclei are then isolated and incubated with nucleotides, one of which is radioactively labeled. Transcription can then continue outside of the cell or run on, and the RNA made will then be labeled. Because the nuclei are isolated, it is unlikely for any new transcripts to begin forming. This allows for scientists to measure transcription rates and determine which genes are active. After performing a nuclear run on, a dot blot is often performed. A dot blot is an assay that allows scientists to discover if specific RNA fragments were produced in the nuclear run-on. To perform a dot blot, single-stranded DNA probes are unlabeled and are added to labeled sections on nitrocellulose. In this case, there is a DNA probe for gene X, gene Y, and gene Z in the sections that are labeled on the left side of the figure. The labeled transcripts from the nuclear run-on are then added to the nitrocellulose and allows for hybridization to occur if possible. Hybridization results in a labeled dot on the blot. In this figure, there is a dot in the section that contained the DNA for gene Y. This means that the transcript for gene Y was produced in the nuclear run-on experiment. Therefore, transcription of gene Y was occurring in the cell at the time of the experiment. However, there appears to be no hybridization to the DNA for genes X or Z, so they must not have been transcribed. Now that we understand all the important background information needed for these experiments, we can begin discussing figure 15.13.
The purpose of this first experiment is to determine if transcription continues past the poly A site. In order to do this, they first isolated nuclei from DMSO-stimulated erythroid leukemia cells. DMSO was used in order to induce high transcription of the globin genes. A nuclear run-on was then performed by incubating the isolated nuclei with radioactively labeled UTP in order to label the run-on RNA, which ended up being mostly globin pre-mRNA. This labeled RNA was then hybridized to DNA fragments A through F on a dot blot. These DNA probes were non-radioactive and single-stranded. They were immobilized on the filter paper in excess. The top part of the figure is a physical map of the DNA. The polyadenylation site is labeled. The red represents exons and the yellow represents introns. The sizes and location of the DNA fragments A through F are shown below this map. Below these sizes, the molarities of RNA hybridization to each fragment are shown along with their standard deviations. The first exon shows where transcription begins, and these scientists were trying to discover where this transcription stops, which can be done by analyzing the molarities of hybridization. Upstream of the globin gene, the molarity of hybridization with DNA fragment A is 0.23. This number represents the background noise which shows how much nonspecific binding there is of RNA to the DNA probe. The similarity increases to 1.06 for DNA probe B, which shows that transcription of this region is occurring and that the probe is binding to a region that contains both introns and exons. If this number were to remain around 0.23, then it would likely still be just background. Next, we can see that probe C shows that transcription is still occurring in this intron region. Likewise, probe D also shows that transcription is still occurring. Probes E and F are located past the final exon and both show high rates of transcription, which is shown by their molarities of 1.04 and 0.93. These results show that transcription is still occurring at least through part of F, although we cannot tell exactly where it stops. Further probes would need to be used in order to determine if and where transcription stops. Because it is known that the poly A site is near the third exon, the experimenters were able to conclude that transcription for eukaryotic genes extends beyond the poly A site. The purpose of this second experiment is to determine if the poly A site is necessary for termination of transcription. In order to do this, they first performed a northern blot. This experiment was done with wild type RNA that contained the CYC1 gene and also with mutant RNA for which this same gene lacked a polyadenylation site. The scientist Proudfoot and his colleagues northern blotted unlabeled RNA transcripts from these wild type and mutant cells. They then hybridized the blot with a labeled CYC1 probe. The left lane shows the wild type RNA and the right lane shows the mutant that is missing the polyadenylation site. They then stripped the blot and reprobed with a labeled ACT1 probe. These transcripts for the ACT1 gene were tested for as a control for blotting efficiency. As you can see from the results of this northern blot, the control showed similar expression of the ACT1 RNA for both the wild type and the mutant. However, there appears to be a great difference in amount of transcription for the CYC1 gene. The mutant, which did not have a functional poly A site, had much less transcription than the wild type. This difference between the wild type and mutant show that transcription is greatly reduced when there is no poly A site present. These scientists decided to do a follow-up experiment and performed a nuclear run-on and a dot blot in order to test if transcription was terminated correctly. This is similar to the first experiment that we discussed with probes A through F. For this experiment, they radiolabeled RNA in wild type and mutant cells and extracted transcripts to test with the dot blot. These mutants again did not have a functional poly A site for the CYC1 gene. The filter paper used for the dot blot contained immobilized unlabeled DNA probes 1 through 6, as shown on the diagram, and also included M, a control. The labeled RNA was then added to the paper in order to see if hybridization could occur. We would not expect to see hybridization with this control because this is for a different gene. For the wild type CYC1 gene, hybridization occurred to probes 1, 2, and 3. This shows that termination of transcription for the wild type form of the gene occurs somewhere in this third region, which is between 509 and 669 base pairs. As shown by the diagram, poly A is shown in region 2. Like the previous experiment, it is still not clear exactly what poly A refers to, but it is likely that the poly A, re poly A recognition and cleavage sites are both in region 2. 
like the first experiment we discussed, this experiment also confirms that transcription occurs past the poly A site because transcription continues past the poly A site into region 3 for these transcripts. This is shown because there is hybridization to probe 3. The dot plot for the mutant gene shows hybridization to all six DNA probes. We cannot tell when or if transcription is terminated because the experimenters did not test for more probes. But by comparing to the wild type, we can determine that proper termination did not occur. The RNA for the mutant is much longer than that of the wild type, which suggests why there wasn't a strong band at the correct size in the northern plot. This allows for us to conclude that lack of a poly A site results in improper termination of transcription. Therefore, a poly A site is required for proper termination of transcription of the CYC1 gene. It is important to note that from this experiment, we cannot conclude whether termination of transcription occurred in the mutant or when it occurred in the mutant. We also do not know why the poly A site is required for proper termination, but we do know that they are somehow related. I hope that you learned more about the importance of polyadenylation and poly A sites. From these experiments, we were able to conclude that transcription occurs well past the poly A site, and that this poly A site is required for proper termination. Thank you for watching, and go blue!